This is the uh, pump. It runs on about 67 watts. And this is the pressure gauge which uh, controls the pressure from the water on the roof. This is a pressure balloon, like a shock absorber for the heat. Um, here we have a well, fresh water inlet which uh, goes through the pump here and allows us to purge the water through the tubes on the roof. So it lets us fill up the closed circuit on the roof. And then we have our cold water coming in to our water tank here. Then we have the loop from the roof which comes down here, in here, out of here and back through the pump. So this black section is a closed loop. We have a temperature sensor down here to measure the temperature in the tank. And then it's just a few wires in here joined together. And um, we have our hot water here coming from the tank. It's from the outlet here. And we have a spare set of heat exchange coils here that aren't being used yet. So they'll be used for hydronic heating. And another temperature sensor, sensor here. And then a pressure relief valve on the top. So if we go to the top of the yard, we'll be able to see the collectors on the roof. See them in the distance over there on the roof. Shiny little things up there. About there. Just below the antenna. There's uh, 60 heat exchange, oh, 60 evacuated tubes being fed with the water from the tank and then um, heating up the water. The temperature on the roof can get, if you turn off the water flow and let it reach maximum temperature, can reach. 150 degrees Celsius. It's 150 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's very high. It's like 50% higher than boiling point. And that hot water gets pumped down into the tank. And stores here. So 500 litres of hot water stored here. So the next stage for this hot water system is to use the secondary tank here, this one, which is a 300 litre tank, and we take off the cap here, fill it up with phase change material, it's a stainless steel tank with copper heat exchange coils, and it will hold maybe 300 litres of PCM, and then we use this heat exchange coil to pass across to this heat exchange coil with some water and another pump and pump heat out of this tank into the phase change tank. So this is giving me hot water for the house. The second tank will hold another amount of heat, which is like a big battery of heat. This is 500 litres, that's 300 litres. 300 litres of PCM maybe gives us around about 2,000 litres worth of hot water equivalent. Then, if that's not enough heat to heat the house, I have a second tank. So if we have two tanks, like this, okay, 300 litres. Then we'll have 2,000 litres of hot water equivalent in the first tank, 2,000 in the second tank, so I've got 4,000 litres of heat storage in equivalents. The clever thing about storing these water tanks is they're fully insulated already, and they already come with, you can buy pumps and everything for them. So that's the way we're gonna store the heat. Once we've got the heat, what do we do with it? Well, if we're storing heat at 67 degrees using a 67 degree phase change material, we can just run off the second heat exchange coils on the tank under the house here, bring it over to the ducted gas heating system here, and um, remove the gas furnace and put a uh, heat exchange coil in there, like a radiator, and we just pass the water through it and then blow air across it to create the heat for the house. So we should be able to heat the house in winter. And the amount of time it heats for depends on how many sunny days we have before it gets cold and then when do we have the next sunny days. So that's how I'm going to do it.